I want to pick up on your mentioning your uh, place of teaching for all those years, Notre Dame. And I have kind of two connected questions. Okay. What was it like? How were you treated? And this is one of the major uh, Catholic universities uh, in the United States, probably the best known. It's a place that is trying to be taken seriously as a, as a university. I want you at the same time to answer the question that so many conservative politicians in this country like to say that somehow American universities are, quote unquote, full of Marxists. And I want you, because you actually worked in one, uh, to tell me whether there's any sense to what they're saying. And also, what was it like to be a professor in an American university like Notre Dame with the interests and the scholarship that you've devoted to being a critic of capitalism? Um, you know, it, 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 it's a tale of two periods for me at, at Notre Dame. Um, in terms of your second question, would but that it were the case that American colleges and universities were full of Marxists? Um, they are not. They, they weren't at Notre Dame. They are not at, at, at all the college universities that I know of in the United States and in many places around the world. Um, they may be liberals um, of a kind of American traditional liberal thinking. Um, they are in many ways critical of what exists out there right now. Maybe, maybe that's, you know, certainly more liberal than the general population. But they're not Marxists in any way, shape, or form. They, 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 they are not. They have not read Marx. Um, and when I would raise questions, they would look at me like, what, what, what are you talking about? Uh, they hadn't gotten it in their own education. Notre Dame hired me as a Marxist. Um, got my PhD at the University of Massachusetts in Amherst, right, where you taught. Um, they knew exactly what my background was and what my research was on. Uh, which was time on, on socialist planning and various forms of socialism around the world. And that's why they hired me. And it was interesting because this was one of the few economics departments in the country, still a majority mainstream economist who prided itself on being an eclectic department. They wanted a little bit of everything. They wanted neoclassical economists and Keynesian economists, but they also wanted post-Keynesian and structuralist and, and pro-labor and in my case, a Marxist economist. They thought that I kind of identified with the Catholic social tradition. And so we did, for a couple of decades, have a thriving economics department in which faculty could conduct their research and teach their courses, and students would get all kinds of different stories or narratives about what capitalism was about, different criticisms of capitalism, different criticisms of mainstream economics, and some of the alternatives. And then things changed. And what changed was not just at Notre Dame. What things changed was American universities, what I call the new corporate university. Right. And Notre Dame was certainly part of that. And it is interesting for us in economics, because economics is taken to be one of those key disciplines. They don't really care about literature. They don't really care about any anthropologists. They really care about economics. And the administration, not the faculty and not the students at Notre Dame, decided they wanted a mainstream department. They wanted to get rid of all that eclecticism. They wanted to get rid of all that variety. They wanted just neoclass. And they stated this openly, neoclassical economists. And as you know, that, that makes them like lots, most economics departments around the country, where students don't learn economic history. They don't learn the history of economic thought. They certainly don't learn Marxian economics or many of the other alternatives. They learn just one way of doing and thinking about economics. And it's a shame. And it means that we end up with, in terms of economics, a kind of illiterate population. You know, and the double irony the same period of time in which they got rid of all of the Marxists, among others, is the time when the conservatives began their, their rhythmic repetition that the university is full of what it had just gotten rid of. The contrast between reality and what the politicians say 